Dr. Siobhan O'Sullivan Does like knowing animals Dr. Siobhan O'Sullivan Does like knowing animals Hey you guys, welcome to Knowing Animals. This episode is from our Protecting Animals series where we speak to animal advocates past and present about the work they do for animals. I'm Siobhan O'Sullivan and I do like knowing animals. Well, hello. Now, <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> hello that, there. That was even done without eye contact. <laughs> so this episode of Protecting Animals is coming from beautiful Sydney town and more specifically, I'm recording just around the corner from beautiful Bondi Beach. I'm really lucky to be joined by actor, producer and writer Martin Dinglewall. Now, Martin will be well known to many listeners, I'm sure. He's appeared in many Australian series, including Home and Away, Underbelly and Upper Middle Bogan. Martin now lives in LA and he's had a very big year, or he had a very big year in 2017. No doubt 2018 will be equally big. And in 2017, Martin did a lot of things, including starring in the hit indie movie, Happy Hunting. Welcome to the podcast, Martin. Well, I feel so welcome. Thank you, Dr. (laughs) Siobhan. So, Martin, you have done a lot of work using your profile to speak for animals over many years. Um, Let's start with your time when you were living in Australia. Why did you get involved in doing work for animals all those years ago when you were living in Australia? Well, obviously, every answer needs details, but the impulsive response is because it's a no-brainer. I... Have, as as many listeners may or may not know, um, I'm the older brother of Sally Dinglewall, who is a deeply entrenched member of the animal rights, animal liberation movement. And it was through my sister's actions through the years that I, very early in the game, put the points together and became vegetarian. That's That's been a long-standing part of my life now. The veganism are a, a more recent discovery in the last five years not discovery shift into a lifestyle but it, um the uh agriculture discussion the animal welfare once it's presented to you um if you don't have to spend 20 years going digging for evidence and just happen upon it when it's presented as it was for me with sally um it's sort of an inescapable topic um that you can't bring up, but as your profile goes, uh, grows with your whatever levels of success, people ask you. Um, so it was just uh, a very organic process of me sharing my feelings. And once you have a particular feeling on a particular topic, it gets its own headline. And then it sort of invariably grew from that. Have you ever detected any kind of negativity towards your interest in animals and protecting animals from people in the industry or other actors or people that you've worked with? Uh, Not that's been made apparent to me. Um, In fact, I'll go to the other extreme and say um, through various communities that I've worked with in Los Angeles in animal rights, um, different opportunities have come and found me that have been, you know, extraordinary opportunities um but i do get the psychology uh, that the the human animal invests in that says don't get too political don't be out on any particular extreme wing and for some reason conversation around animal exploitation is viewed as an extreme perspective um that's just abc street level psychology we don't want to know how we get what we get you know um so I, I, I guess I've had other people say, look, you know, I really appreciate your posts. Don't know if I would have put it out there myself, but it got me thinking. Um, and, you know, that's in every individual perspective for me. It's like, this is what I feel. And, you know, as you well know, because you've built your life around this, um, you, um, you actually feel deeply obliged on some level not not allowing it to get fanatical, but to not remain silent on certain things because... Those, that world, those situations, you know, the, the, the delivery system, as it were, they will cut as many corners as they can. Um, so it needs to be, you know, vigilantly observed and you need to draw attention to whatever you can, whenever you can. It can't ever be more important than your art, but it is innately connected to who you are. So it is your art. Your opinion is your art. 
So you're living in LA now, as you mentioned, and there is quite an animal rights scene there. Can you tell us about what you've been involved in over there? Oh, yeah, many things. Um, We've been, um, immigration will tell us we've been there five years. I feel like I've been there about three years creatively connected, you know, to my industry, my mojo really humming. Um, When we first got there, the first protests we got involved with actually were um, the Ringling Brothers. Um, The the elephant hook stuff was the flavour of the month and profoundly important. Um, And, you know... So, like, we find time for it. We hear about it. When I get to different countries where I live, I connect with the animal rights community pretty swiftly. Um, and um, you, he- you see what their activity calendar is like. And you can't go to everything, but that bullhook thing, it was topical and it was a, a bill was coming up. And so, you know, leafleting and getting just people aware of it seemed like we happened to hit that that time and then after that then the um the uh sea well thing came up which i care a lot about um so we were we were reasonable reasonably active part of that um not that we did road trips down to san diego but you know in la whenever there were consulate gatherings and whatnot we would do the appearances we could um there's um i've been involved in the live meat export uh, issue um also, probably the most recent is on the Sunday nights that I can, I'll get down to a place called Vernon, which is where Farmer John's is. They supply all the um, pork meat for uh, the Dodger stadiums and whatnot, and the the amount of trucks that pull up. If I wish I could crunch the data for you right now about the, the amount of throats that <laughs> slit every every night. Um, it's a holocaust. You know that sounds dramatic, but it is dramatic. Um, on Sunday nights, um, um. LA um, Pig Save, um, which is actually run by um, a girl named Amy and her um, her boyfriend Sean Monson, uh, who was the writer director of Earthlings, and they organise that, and it's growing in numbers. I think they get like three hundred people every Sunday now. They go down there, and as the trucks pull up to get processed, they um, the animal rights or the you know, people go to the up to the side and feed them water. Um, so you know, there, there's always stuff to be involved with. Um, where you can as as you're compelled to do so. Mm. So, Martin, you have done a lot of different things for a lot of different animal-related causes. I can remember quite a few years ago now, uh, you and I and other people, we went into a piggery and had a look at the conditions that the sows and the piglets were living in. Can you say something about what it's like for you when you do things like that, actually go inside and see how animals are living in factory farms? Yes, in a strange kind of way, and it's an absurd thing to say, um, it sort of makes your role as an activist um, easier because you're not um, intellectually motivated. It's um, it's 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 emotional ignition. Um, you go into a um, you know a, a, a piggery three in the morning. And you see what's what, not even a crack of sunlight coming in, and the the screaming and the terror in their eyes. Um, yeah, you um, that you know that's that's a a sensory injection. Um, you, you smell it, you feel it in the air, and you know that um, we've we've switched off um, a part of ourselves that is, I, I would say, the peace center for human beings, actually. Because um, you know we're, we're, as the saying goes, we, you know we're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, not vice versa. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually am am happy for anyone that is moves into the um, awareness phase of their life through emotional channels as opposed to, oh look, I I, I hear it's bad for you, and I and I want to try and lose my spare tire and. You know, hey, I, you know, I also, I know it's bad. I, I want to try and cut back. The intellectual drive can be a, a more difficult process of life shifting, sometimes entirely unsustainable for yourself, whereas emotionally it's just a complete flick of the switch um, and then you're in. And <laughs> assuming you move with the information that, that your body's absorbed emotionally. Yeah. Yeah. 
So then at the other end of the spectrum, you've also done other types of things uh, for animal advocacy, such as you've been shortlisted as the world's sexiest vegetarian uh, oh, on the PETA list. Yeah, I'm oh, sure right? you have been. Yeah. Oh, my, my wife might have brought that to my attention once or twice, um, but I... I thought that was a more uh, localised... Uh, Peter, well, thank you, Peter. Oddly enough, my wife's name also. Um, well, thank you, Peter. Asia Pacific or uh, whatever region. I say Asia Pacific because they're the uh, that's the branch of Peter that I've done a couple of poster campaigns for. Um, again, saying they, they approached me kindly. It's not like I went and said, look, I'm available, let's go. Uh, I, had, I was involved with a successful television series, Underbelly, and then they you know, got word that... that, that, that insane sociopathic son of a bitch happens to be vegan we might have a chat with him so it, it, all the components find each other so you're happy to lend your celebrity to animal causes oh, yeah animal causes? i mean beyond happy um and beyond compelled to um because you know it, it's uh, are we allowed to mention the date Absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 the morning of the new year of 2018, and we had a party at our family house last night in Dover Heights, up from Bondo Beach. And um, Senator Mark Pearson, a long-standing friend of ours, was in the house with us, and um, we wound up having this um, really interesting chat with him, as we always do. And it, it was orientated around my capacity to not be able to deal with the um, the timeline of 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 what his art form is, which is introducing bills and you know world changing stuff and he um he actually said his um his job is actually to simplify it just to get people thinking and that's so succinct and that's all our job is i think um for all activist orientated people is we just want to plant the seed and leave people alone to allow to germinate in them how it does and you try to have any further control over that, it's um, to your own detriment and to the cause's detriment. Um, but you know, when, when you when you glimpse, you know, the horror, you there is a deadline for you. Like you want it solved now, um, but then you got to pull back and just sit in the philosophy of just if a conversation comes up, the best result is just leave people thinking. Mm. That's it. So just to clarify for our international listeners, Mark Pearson represents the Animal Justice Party in the upper house of the New South Wales Parliament and he's our first Animal Justice Party uh, MP elected to an Australian Parliament. So it's very exciting and as Martin very said, exciting. yeah, there was a party uh, here at this very house last night which <laughs> featured Mark Pearson. So Martin, I ask everyone who comes on Knowing Animals to answer five quick questions. Are you ready for your five quick questions? Or am I ever going to be ready for your five quick questions? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Yes. Can you recall when you first started to think that there was something wrong or problematic about the human non human animal relationship? It was when um, some information was glacially presented to me by my sister and I know the impact that it had on me and I observed that it didn't have the same impact on others close to me and I was stunned by how can you get this information and that not completely change your life and <clears throat> uh, and from that moment it was it was curious that oh there's um there's uh th this this is just a, a journey some people just can take the information and be unaffected by it. And I found that a little bit startling. Mm. Yeah. So the next question follows on very nicely. Can you recall the first thing you did to try and bring about change for animals? <sighs> um, the, the, the honest answer to that probably is just being surrounded by senators and vice presidents and presidents of animal um, protection agencies, my hands-on work has been next to nothing – However, I do have the, the platform of celebrity on whatever level. Um, and that is the only way and the only place in which I'm of any use um, and have any impact. Um, apart from living the way I live. But I also, I will actually do a shout back to, um, oh, I wish I could remember the, the lovely lady's name at the moment that was the organiser of 
the Sydney Vegan uh, Sydney Vegan Expo, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was Lauren. Yeah, Lauren. Yeah, yeah I Lauren. can't remember her surname, but Lauren. Yeah, yeah. Lauren. Lauren. You know who you are. Um, she reached out to me a couple of years back and said, "I'd like to invite you to consider being the uh, ambassador." I'm like, I certainly will be. What are the dates? And and I'm like, but I'm absolutely going to be in production and unavailable to be there. Uh, uh, yeah, Lauren. Um, I said, I, I, I'm I'm honoured by the invitation, but I won't be able to physically attend. She's like, we've had that problem in the past. Um, would you be able to do a, a short video? And so I did. And with the um a, the remarkable editor Cynthia Sharp, who does a lot of the work with Whale Watchers and um, Sea Shepherd. He, um, I went down to his place um, just outside of LA and did a piece to camera and he edited it masterfully and it was sent to Lauren. And um, that, after its uh, official screening at the expo, then went on to become a little bit of a viral um, hit, fantastically so, because it helped. I mean, the feedback I got online was mind-boggling because I'd never been part of something having that level of impact regards, well, I'm not anemic and I'm not... Um, you know, I'm a six foot tall, you know, brown haired Australian guy, not the textbook look for that kind of person. Um, but the, um, you know, the, the message, which is five, six minutes long, was evidently used as a device for other people to say, please watch this. This is my journey. Um, so feeling how useful that was to other people was a phenomenal gift. Wonderful. It's called actually uh, uh, Vegan is the New Black. Martin Dinglewall, if you want to jump on uh, YouTube, it's right there. Oh, great. Yeah, on my, anywhere, but also on Martin Dinglewall's YouTube channel, it's right there. Oh, fantastic. So if you had to name one animal advocate who's had a big impact on you, who would it be? It's tricky to name one because there are numerous, um, because the luxury of living in Los Angeles, all the, um, you know, Brian Wendell who did Forks Over Knives, Sean Monson who did Earthlings in Unity, um, you know, having um, Mark Pe- such access to Mark Pearson as we have had over the years. Um, uh, um, the guys who just did, uh, uh, Kip who just did Cons- Cowspiracy, all those guys, they're all, if, if they don't live in LA, they're frequently in LA and we're interacting with them Often, and I'm um, Karen Dawn, who runs Dawn Watch, is a very dear friend of mine in Los Angeles. So these people that are these filmmakers are also now my personal human friendship based in community. Um, so th- th- it's its own self-fulfilling experience. There isn't one, but Sean and Karen and those likes have... Um, and I've just recently um, crossed paths with Nathan uh, Runkle a couple of times, who set up Mercy for Animals, did a photo shoot for his apparel in his house and... No, they, they, they just, they're there and now accessible and um, so, you know, that's its own reward, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Sally Dingle Wall. Oh, uh, way too much access to Sally. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to slot that in, Sally Dingle. I'll, tr- I'll try to achieve the Good same time. <laughs> Silence in the room and recording, Sally Dingle Wall. <laughs> okay, what's the A- most- Actually, you know what, to, in <laughs> fairness... She's an absolute hero to me. Uh, n- 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 not even unlike yourself, because you're my oh, immediate and family. Shimano, so yeah, because you're my immediate family, and you're the people that triggered my psychology into this way of living far earlier than I would have had I had to acquire the information on my own. Um, actually, yeah, I even want to reverse a bit more and say <laughs> it's astonishing because you know in the vegan world. You online, you read enough stories about these people who have this moment of awareness and they go and do family Christmas and the, and the grief that they get from people that don't get it and, you know, the, the aunties and grandmothers and whatever trying to feed the kid despite you. And it's like, not only do I not have that, the, the reason I live the life the way I do is because the people around me presented it to me. So I'm actually born in the eye of the storm of the people that are actually running this movement in this country. Oh, you know, actually, Kim as well, um, Sydney-based guy that runs the um, vegan club. Stanto, yeah, Stanto, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've met him once. I don't see him often, but I know the work he's doing yeah. um, is. You know, these are the people that are. You know, I use my platform. These people live, walk, and breathe it. Mm. You guys are actually mm. the movement. Mm. Yeah. So, Martin, what's the most important thing animal advocates can do for animals? Animal advocates can do for animals or just people? Well, the question's animal advocates, yeah. but if you want to just say people, for sure. Well, look, I am... Um, God, if you want to use the word 
prayer, you know, you know, my, 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 my desire, if I had any kind of subliminal social influence, it'd just be reduction because that's achievable. And it's, um, you know, we've got, a, we've got a generation of kids coming up here that, well, certainly in our world, that are, 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 are very big parts, are very, you know, are, are being raised by a connected conversation. Um, and, you know, we'll wait and see how it affects them when they're 15, what decisions they'll make, but I think the world will be a very different place then. But, um, do, you know, just, just for people en masse, uh, all, all I'd encourage is, it's a great quote, I think it's actually by Johnny Depp, saying, if, if photographs of animal cruelty upset you you might want to eliminate the cruelty and not the photographs mm. you know it's um we all know what's going on now where it's it's beyond the age of information we're actually smack bang in the age of addiction but we know what we know and the idea that you know there, there there is a dark shady corner to the vegan world and that is understandably people that have had their hearts and souls arrested by what they've seen and they're like change now now and it's like well it doesn't happen now and there was a time when you didn't know and whether or not your journey was emotional or intellectual that's each you know that's such an individual odyssey that journey but everyone knows and it's like okay so let's um supply and demand let's just like ease up a bit then a bit more then a bit more and let's just let's just work for a bit of equilibrium the world is unlikely to go <laughs> plant-based and you know the, 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 the you know the a one level of human psychology is that we don't change unless we need to, and you know we are getting to a um, consumption point where we're going to need to do some radical shifts in our processing soon. But um, just for your own personal thing, I'd say when you when you do just start to you know dip your toe into the solution side of things, um, you, you you cannot imagine the size of the ripple effect from the smallest gesture. And to get off your own back, you know, you know, so just just take your foot off it a bit. Mm. That's all. So, Martin, final question. If you had the power to change one thing about the relationship between humans and animals, what would it be? You don't want to get too much into the um, karma conversation because, you know, some people are raised as hunters, some people are raised in the last crop fishing trawlers and it's livelihoods and everything falls under a different perspective. But there was a film made many years ago called Powder about this albino, albino boy that could hold electricity and have these supernatural powers. And I, I, I love the metaphor for this movie because I don't think it was supernatural. I think it was just supernature. And there's this one scene <clears throat> where this hunting guy was taking a bunch of kids and going on to show you how to shoot a deer. And in that world, that's what life is. Through the looking glass of an animal rights person, it's murder and all perspectives are valid but this one scene the the powder guy just holds the hunter and he has this sort of anaphylactic shock of <gasps> and you see him go into just flashes of, of terror and trauma and that hunter's life is changed and all the kids looking onto him all the you know the uh the the, the jock kids like what the hell man what just happened man Who, what the beep 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 and the look that this hunter gave to this powder guy it was a very well performed scene because you saw that he actually had a soul shift because he felt the terror of that he was inflicting on another um and it's that's why i drive this with karma because you don't want to inflict that on anyone but you don't connect unless you understand and you don't understand unless you experience and um i would just hope for everyone in the least violent way possible, just that moment of really understanding. And it's like you are, you know, you're, you're want for that snack. Well, you know, none of us are perfect animals. We all derail. Um, so it's only about cultivating reduction through awareness. But um, yeah, it's like uh, I want everyone just to have a moment because, you know, that abruptness, that, that's the essence of our growth. Again, we don't change until we have to. Um, that, that's what I'd want everyone to have a moment of like I felt that enough that I'm actually thinking about this mm. which comes back to Mark Pearson's comment last night I just want people to think yeah. and connect 
That's all. Yeah. Wonderful. So, Martin, what are you working on next? What does 2018 hold for you? I literally leave Sydney tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'm back in Los Angeles um, going backwards in time, um, literally arriving probably this evening. And I'm back on set on a – there's a TV series being shot called First List – about um, <clears throat> um, uh, encryptions and deciphering. Um, it's a espionage show based out of uh, uh, the FBI, CIA world. And I play Will Scott, who is America's eminent code cracker. Um, <clears throat> it's an eight-part series. Um, sit around, um, you know, uh, you know, God willing, it arrives on Netflix um, within the year. Um, so uh, that's what I'm shooting at the moment. We um, wrap up production on that end of January. And um, then, who knows, I've had a couple of um, feature films released last year, as you mentioned, Happy Hunting, um, which is an American film with two components, because I'm an Australian playing the American lead, and one of the two directors is actually the son of uh, the Gibson family, one of the Gibson boys, with his directorial debut, doing the legacy of Very Proud. So there, he's Australian born, from Wool... 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 <laughs> Somewhere, like, deeply Australian. Like, you're born there? You raised in Malibu, of course, but you're born there. So um, it's a, it's an Australian infused American independent hit, <clears throat> um, which was a great exposure vehicle for me. And had another film that I shot with Antonio Banderas called Gunshy, which we filmed in Chile. They both came out in 2017. You know, doing some nice work for me. This one, um, this this vehicle may be an introductory piece for me. We'll see. <clears throat> um, then I just keep auditioning hard, and opportunities come and find me, and keep um, telling the story, and then. People say, hey, how do you feel about A, B and C? And this conversation continues. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, Martin, where can people find out more about your work? My work as an actor. My work as a human being, as an activist. <coughs> uh, all through any all of right. those. Um, I, have a, um, I have a YouTube channel, Martin Dingawal, which has my um, public service announcements, my film trailers, my um, commercials, all that stuff is there. I also have Instagram, Martin Dingawall, which is um, the, the the portal that I take behind the scenes on all my projects. Um, and I have a Facebook fan page, Martin Dingawall, which feeds through my Instagram, but I do some other postings on. So if you're interested to follow my career, firstly, thank you. Secondly, Instagram or um, or Martin Dingawall fan page or YouTube. Um, you can also go to IMDb if you want to research my recent stuff and my showreels there, etc. Um, yeah, I p please come come along. It'd be, <laughs> be great to have you. Wonderful. Martin, thank you so much for joining us for Knowing Animals and thank you to the listeners for joining us for Knowing Animals, the podcast where we talk to animal studies scholars and advocates about their work. Now, don't forget to follow us, Knowing Animals, on Twitter at knowing underscore animals or on Facebook at Knowing Animals. Also, don't forget to leave a review on iTunes. Reviews make it easier for other people to find us. I'm Siobhan O'Sullivan and I do like knowing animals. <laughs>